Tonight, the moment has arrived. Wait, are we at 10, 11? Yeah, we're here. Five, four contestants remain, all with a software engineer from Boston. Some people call me cocky. Yeah, I prefer overconfident. <laughs> yeah. Proved that despite his antics, he is a force to be reckoned with. I want to keep my name. <laughs> Please feel free. And 22-year-old Whitney from Mississippi put school on hold to pursue her dreams. You're young, you're sweet. Are they going to eat you alive and spit you out? The most difficult pastry to cook ever. Well done. I am the pastry princess. Tonight, Stop. Stop. the journey comes to an end. The first ever MasterChef final. America's four best amateur cooks will face off in their toughest challenge yet and cook the most important dishes of their lives. My God. Oh! Oh, he dropped the chicken. Can you smell that? That's good. Wow, pretty ballsy. In the end, only one will walk away with $250,000, a cookbook publishing deal, and above all else, cooking's most coveted title. The winner of America's first ever master. Oh, I was eating them so good. The remaining four contestants are about to go head-to-head -to, -head to win a spot in the ultimate showdown, the MasterChef Final. My initial reaction when I walked in... Mods, feel free to give like good, uh, good, good timeouts or burn bans for spoilers. It's just trash. It's an old show, but we're watching it. If you spoil the show like a month ago, or whenever we're watching it, yeah, whatever. We, nobody, nobody pay attention. No, we're watching the show. If you're spoiling it, you're a moron. You're just getting promoted. Master Chef Kitchen today was this is it. It's empty. There's two workstations. Yes, final four. It's the make it or break. It's the end all or be all. Look at all four of you. You are the four most talented amateur cooks anywhere Charo in America today. And one of you to three will become Master Chef. That comes with a quarter million dollars. Souffle. Your very Big own cookbook. And, up and this could be the start of building your very up. own empire. To win a spot in the final, there will be two head to head cook offs. The contestants have to make three dishes in two hours. First, Gordon needs to draw names to decide who's cooking against whom. First name David Miller. You're going up against. <laughs> yeah, easy, 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 Bring easy. It. She'll going against Dave. I'm going easy against Whitney, Dave. and I don't think she's intimidated. Maybe she is, but she's doing a hell of a job of not showing it to anybody. I'll be extremely honest. I'm afraid of her. How does that feel? So I got what I wanted, so uh, I, I fished my wish. <laughs> Um, you fished your wish. I fished my wish. He is a cocky son of a bitch. Don't discount my presence here. I'm still here for a reason. The semifinal cook-offs yeah. are David versus Sheetle, then Whitney versus Lee. Boston software engineer David's exuberant character. Blank. And classy cooking has made a big impression on the judges. I want to keep on eating them. Please feel free. Amazing. <laughs> His risk-taking has often raised questions. I have a New England-style bouillabaisse. A great bouillabaisse takes two days to make, minimum. I've got an allowance. But his signature style of classic with a twist and attention to flavor always the went out. The seasoning is perfect. Butter poached fish was a huge success. Incredible. David Miller, you were the hero of that team. Oh! David is a clear front runner for the MasterChef crown. I don't know. I think it's good. That is why you were David Miller. <laughs> Chicago teacher Sheetal has risen to constant challenges well outside of her cooking comfort zone. I've never killed anything in my life. You never was? I think I can kill the crab. And while her time management has occasionally let her down, it's not right. Her exotic flavor combinations have seen her dishes get better and better. Honestly, first mouthful, close my eyes, I'm in India. Delicious. That tastes amazing. 
The winner of the last mystery box challenge, Chitao, well done. Making her a quiet contender for the Master Chef title. Yes. Yeah. 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 One of you. Chat arrived. It has arrived. Chat. One of you. 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 One of I'm so excited to share this kind of experience with my family. First person I see is my Beyonce, who I haven't seen since all of this started. It was just a wonderful treat. For this challenge, our three judges will ask each home cook yeah. to make them a classic dish. That must have been one year's shit then. Jesus. Joe. What is the first real stunning, delicious dish you want to see? Be nice. <laughs> she was having fucked up, man. I'm gonna go back to my roots. It's a northern Italian classic, and something that can certainly distinguish a great chef from an amateur hack. That dish is veal milanese. What? That is a tall order, Graham. What would you want to see? I think there's one true dish that absolutely represents Americana at its finest. I want to experience the greatest slice of American apple pie. Because apple pie okay, is enough. so badass in its simplicity and deliciousness. Right? I want to take a piece of apple pie and rub it on this stomach while I'm eating oh, no, with the other hand. <laughs> That's what I want to do, and I am not afraid no, to do it in front of all of you. And my dish, I suppose it's the heartbeat of American classics. It's something that has incredible fond memories of my first mm -hmm. ever trip to the States. I'm going to ask both of you to make Clam chowder. <laughs> That's tough. New England. New England. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> Clam chowder is made all over America. It doesn't have to just come out of Boston. And whether it's a twist of your interpretation or you know, homage to your ethnic background, it doesn't matter. You can make a stunning clam chowder your way. Mm, crap, double crap, and oh, apple pie. I got the apple pie. You're cooking for a spot Damn. in the final. Now I she's going to win because they're making an order the Okay, because it's clearly scripted. the chef with the most votes will go through to the MasterChef final. You got three dishes. First person to two, that's it. You're in the finals. Your time starts from now. Off you go. Oh, the real five head is to ditch a, a, a meal completely. Just make two of them. Two hours, three stunning dishes. The time starts. Now, off you go. Right. I heard clam chowder, I heard deal milanese, and Take more time. I panicked for about a split uh, second. Two meals and then I realized and pop off. I know how to do this. I can completely do this. This is not gonna be a problem. There's no middle of the road. There's no bottom three, there's no top three. You win or you lose. Sheets, I'm sending you home to Chicago. So, uh, pack your bags. This Ooh. is it. It's game time. One of you's going home, one of you's going into the first ever MasterChef final. Come on. I've never made an apple pie before. And having to do so in front of my mother, who can cook 14 to 5 hours blindfolded with one hand tied behind her back, I'm a little nervous about Wait a minute. It's just, it's just not what I do. Damn. It's so disappointing. She's walking away, dude. What are you putting there? What are you flavoring the apples with? Oh, I'm using star anise. Star anise, nice. A little lemon juice, brown sugar. That's it. You know, the apples for apple this pie sounded. is a simple dish. It has to speak for itself. Actually, and also sounded. with the pastry. Is it a buttery pastry? It's made up very rich. It's buttery, but it's not too buttery, because if it's too buttery, it's 
very difficult to work with. But it's, it's buttery. It's definitely not a low-fat dessert. If I have a thing that's a dessert, it's apple pie. So I was very, very confident. 90 minutes left. Good job, good job. All right, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Next one, next one. The fact that Cheadle's got the bottom already lined, she's working on the top right now. Perfect. Oh. Here we go. Get it in, get it in. The apples are cooked, they're on the shell, and they're going to be going in the oven. And that you're still having trouble making the first, the first layer is, it, yeah, it scares think. me. You guys know I don't bake. I know, but that's, yep. you got you to figure this out. Yep. You're in a tailspin now. I'll be honest, seeing Spurs in chat is really fucking disappointing. But can you guys please do better? Come on, man. Chantal and David, those pies should have been in the oven by now. All right, give that thing. Oh. Yay, look at right. Fucking lame as shit. Come on, dude. There's no way I'm gonna be master chef without putting something resembling an apple pie on a plate. So, you know, I took my broken crust and I formed it into a little ramekin, put a, about an apple's worth of apples in the middle, did the same crumb top that my Wait, mother always what? does. It looks great from here. And my little, little tiny little apple pie is pretty much done. Yeah, Dave, Dave, all right, Dave. Good job. All right. Right, one hour gone. One hour left. Three stunning dishes. One of you will be leaving MasterChef. I don't know about the One ratio of, of pastry to the apple. The MasterChef final. Make sure you are stunning, a small delicious cup like clam chowder. While Shido seems to have the advantage with the traditional apple pie, she'll need to win two of the three dishes to move on to the final. On the three dishes that you've got to do. What's the weakest element? What one are you most worried about? I think the clam chowder. Clam chowder. Yeah, the one that you have to taste. If there's one piece of advice for both of you, don't underestimate the saltiness of the clam naturally. Okay. Just be careful with the seasoning. Yeah, it's just too salty. All right, Miller, you got three dishes that separate you from going on to the final and ultimately a quarter million dollars and the title of Master Chef. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? I am good. I have everything I need. What's the story with the chowder now? The chowder, I'm just cooking the potatoes down. Okay. I've got clam. That's the liquid from the clams? Yeah. Let me give that a roll. That's really nice. Oh, if there's anything I know how to do oh. right, it's clam chowder. Okay, so, I hope so. There's no way I'm going to lose. I need to no thank you. Okay, so there. clams, For what's sure. the strategy on those? You're going to steam them? Yes, with in wine and water. Actually, um, what do you think of this idea? I was going to... Don't ask questions. Stock, um, ...use shrimp shells for some flavor. Fabulous. Yeah? Smart. Okay. From Joe, you know, you learn these little tricks of the trade, like to put fish bones or shrimp shells in to season okay. that stock, to flavor that stock. And oh when my I told gosh, him that that was my plan, the the I could see that so he was happy. like, Wait, hold good on, girl. I have a mouth on my door, no, Mom, I don't need any more cream cheese. Don't buy me any more taste, already. Yes. I've lose three gallons, and I keep breaking out. That's good. So there's only 20 minutes to go, yes? All right, come on, come Keep on. Keep it going, guys, yes? Make sure your pan's on. Get that pan nice and hot to get a good Wait, sear on the, the veal. What was the last dish? I didn't hear what they come said. On, come on. Don't stand there, boiling veal. A completely different taste on a veal milanese. I decided to a go veal with milanese. the absolute traditional way of cooking this veal, which is you pound the veal, you bread it, you pan fry it. That is veal milanese. It's gonna be dog shit. At this stage in the game, you really want to show the judges all of the skills, techniques, and real knowledge of master cookery. Attempting Ooh, to yeah. wow the judges, David breaks tradition and takes a huge risk by cooking his veal in the oven. Oh my god, wow. Wow, that is pretty ballsy. <laughs> I'm that badass. Okay, dude. Either that or out of your mind. You score it appropriately. That's all I ask. It's completely untraditional, mm -hmm. and you could do it. You'd have to be a very skilled cook to be able to this cook it guy, through, dude. browning the outside. Yeah. You know, you'd lose the whole essence of mm -hmm. it. But it's a, it's a big, big, bold move. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're the man. How do you know? You've got that crisp when you cook it like that in the oven. And more importantly, it's not pounded. It looks like a real chop. For one of you, this is your last three minutes now inside MasterChef Kitchen. Come on, make it count. God. Chattel, these last minutes, 
Normally, she wins double play. She loses yes, both the other ones. Composed, and more importantly, use those minutes wisely. Her chowder is dog shit. Come on, Come on. In and her thing is pounded to a crisp. Everything. All three dishes must be completed and served together. Look at that. I mean, there's a strong possibility she tell my bed to sneak in and steal it. I mean, she's cooking oh the veal God. perfectly. The right kind of time. Right. Yeah. You can hear the sizzle yeah, in the right, pan. Right, right. All right, Dave, you're, you're, you're looking golden. David, you're golden, buddy. Pretty, pretty. Yeah. It's good, Tito. It's good. You got no time. You got less than a minute. She tell you have to play your dessert. 45 seconds to go. She tell we've got to get in here. No, 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 and the clam chowder is all going head to head. The first one to two out of three will be going through to the MasterChef final. Hey, won't you chill, Ten, chill. Nine, she tell you have to play your dessert. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. <laughs> well done. Pretty well done. Oh, damn. OK, dude. Guys, they went the fucking black on those like one. Special chefs, absolutely amazing. And just think, in previous challenges, we've had one dish with 90 minutes. Today, three dishes in two hours. Well done. Thank you, chefs. Okay, first up, give me your best bowl ever of clam chowder. Being from Boston. I'm thinking there's no way I'm going to lose New England clam chowder. The Otherwise, they're not even going to let me go home. This would be a huge upset. To say thank Little you girl so whose parents are from India. Despite all, all the challenges you have faced, uh, you have helped seven. so many people, and we are forever grateful for you. Chat and Felix, Thanks can we get the trans rights? XQCL. Her clam chowder takes down New England boys' clam chowder? Oh, my God. OK, what I'm looking for is a rich, sumptuous, delicious creamy chowder. Clams cooked perfectly. Chateau, yes. what is it that's unique to you? What have you done to it? You know, when I was making the broth, I put in some shrimp shells to give it some additional flavor. I put some chopped parsley and a little bacon garnish. David, what should I be experiencing on your modern some twist shells. of a clam chowder? It should be a traditional New England-style clam chowder. I've used red potatoes, uh, which should be cooked perfectly. And is that tradition in Boston that they drizzle extra virgin olive oil on top of a clam chowder? No, that's no. my that's my own spin on it. Is, is that a combination of too much time on your hands, or are you that ballsy? It looks a little to wonky. Mess with tradition. Let's go with Cheer. the latter. I'm going to start with the one that looks. The most traditional, yours, Chateau. Wait. Bland. Too runny. For me, the seasoning is exact. It's precise. You've got that right amount of heat just at the back. That's good. Really good indeed. No, 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 no! David! What the fuck? What no. should I be tasting in yours that I didn't taste in Chateau's? The heat Perfection. from mine will come from red pepper flakes. It will be creamier, yet it'll still be light. The red potatoes, as a contrast to the russets, I think are a little earthier, and that's why I use the olive oil. OK. The texture of yours is a lot thinner. Clams are cooked absolutely perfectly. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> this is a very difficult choice. 
They're both delicious. The winning chowder. David. David Miller. David Miller. David Miller. Yeah! Well done. Absolutely delicious. Yes! Fuck! Here's why. There's more of a clam texture and flavor running through, but you've managed to not make it too thick, so it's so enjoyable. And it's not three mouthfuls you want, it's three bowlfuls you want. It tastes absolutely phenomenal. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Well done to you both. One point, Dave. Zero points for Sheetal. OK, dude, dude. Sit down. If he wins the next one, you're leaving Master Chef. How are we doing, guys? Doing real well. All right. We are heading to Grandma's house. Apple pie time. Round two, the apple pie. She does it a traditional dish. Or my take on it is dog shit, let's be honest. Is not traditional. What, what is that? I don't have this apple pie. I'm going home. And apple pie is my thing. It looks like a sugar pie. What apples did you use in your pie? All Granny Smith. See how, how it's just flaking apart? on its own without, I mean, you look at it wrong and it breaks, <laughs> you know? It's like it feels me coming. It's so completely unadorned, it's it's kind of... It, they're, they're, it's about dog shit. Beautiful in its, in its simplicity. That crust is amazing. Great job on that. Thank you. David, the fact that this isn't even an apple pie, this had better be the most delicious orgasmic experience ever. Yeah, it's not. It's almost like a, it's like an apple cupcake. Mm. Look at this. The crust is a little thick. A little thick. It's like a half an inch thick. Look at the thickness of that crust and the thinness of that apple. So that's a, it's a fucking ratio, man. The crumble on top. When he eats, he looks look like a chipmunk when he eats it. It's delicious. Really good job on that. Does he not eat it? So, like David, you have one point. You need one more to win and go forward. Cheeto, you need one point to stay alive in this competition. It's tough. That's not rude. The apple pie that I want to have it another looks piece of. Yeah, Sheetal wins that. Come on now. It's Sheetal's. Yeah. I mean... Well done. Even then, you not a single producer that. that's a would ever let that go to fucking two to zero. American apple pie. Thank well you. done. The apple pie. Sheetal completely destroyed me on it. Now I'm back in it. 1-1. One, one. It's tied. It's a tied game. It's also, it's also filmed in a segmented way, where if it goes one to one, okay. they rearrange the pieces. Home. Serve me two perfectly executed veal milaneses. Yes, sir. It's a traditional, authentic dish. You pound the veal, you bread it, you pan fry it. That is veal milanese think of Italian, and you think of Joe, and you know he's very deeply rooted in his traditions. Oh, just Joe. One guy gets me into the finals, uh, or sends me home. Chital, what went through your mind when we asked you to cook this Italian classic? She wanted to, she wanted to punch the, the fuck out of that thing. The first thing to do is to make sure that the veal was pounded so that it cooked evenly. I think that's tricky when it's on the bone. David, a veal milanese is traditionally pan-fried. How did you cook this? It's actually, it's pan-fried and then finished in the oven. Chital, a traditional milanese would be the inside to a perfectly medium rare. Look, looks good. Too much? Looks overcooked a little bit. 
how yours is cooked. Almost perfectly. It's very, very finely Ooh. seasoned. David. Uh -oh. Ooh, damn! You know, it this kept is all the juice. Unorthodox approach. A Milanese spessa, as they would say, thick, is not a traditional Milanese. Was that an intentional strategic move on your part or by accident? It was intentional. It looks juicy and soft. What? Comment? This is a truly difficult decision. A traditionally executed plate that's well done against <laughs> one that takes the spirit of the dish and interprets it in this kind of innovative way. Well, are they going to give it to her because it's flat? Or are they going to give it to me because it's absolutely cooked perfectly? The veal milanese that I will choose. I'm like, just say what you're going to say. Tell me what's going to happen. Oh, I mean. With $250,000 on the line, the cookbook, the title of MasterChef, this is a decision that really weighs on me. The veal milanese that I will choose that will take either of you into the final round is the one that shows tradition uh -oh. combined with technique and innovation. Oh. No. Bravo, David Miller. Congratulations. No! Finally! Fuck, man! Congratulations. Chitao. Thank you. Uh, David, congratulations. Thank you, Chef. Chitao, you've been amazing. From the first instant when yes, you walked the through those doors... presentation was better. You had my vote. That level of love, passion that you have with food doesn't end here. You must continue that journey. My experience here at MasterChef has been life-changing for me as a cook. These are the flavors, these are the spices of my childhood. I felt like I was in India tasting that. I have grown leaps and bounds. Okay, okay cool. Wait, two seconds. Out of the studio, man. We're trying to watch the, the, the rest of the show. Now you can do this. Congratulations. I'm sure that crab is very, very happy to give his life for this dish. <laughs> no, no. There are not enough words to convey how proud I am to have been part of such an amazing creative process. I've definitely grown as a cook, so I'm taking that with me, definitely. Shit out. Hey, man, I'm trying amazing. to watch the show, man. You. Don't take your apron off. You deserve to keep it. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Ready for round two. Please, Lee and Whitney, let's go. Good luck, guys. I have two hours to cook the best three dishes of my life so that I can position myself into the finals against Dave. Whitney is going to go down first. Dave is going to go down second, as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure okay, you're dying to get started. But more importantly, who's going to be watching you cook? Because behind that door, there are some very excited faces to see you both. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, please. I've never been away from my family as long as I have. And just to see my family's faces, it was just amazing. Lee, okay. happy to see your girlfriend. I love you. Oh, come and on. And my best friend since we were 12 years old. Yes, there's one missing ingredient. You love. And someone very special, close to your heart. Say hello to Hannah, your mum. All the way from Israel, she has made the trip to be here to wish you all the best in your semi-final. I last seen my mom nine months ago. I didn't imagine that she would come here all the way, but here she is, and I'm, I'm speechless. I'm so happy that she's here for this. Now the pressure is really on. You're about Look to play the toughest two hours ever so far in MasterChef. Give your ladies a kiss goodbye. <laughs> Whitney. Say goodbye, they're not going far, they're only going up there. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay. oh, God. Now that everybody's here, even your mother, are you ready? Absolutely. Whitney, are you ready? Yes. 
At just 22 years old. I'm like a butterfly and sting like a bee, and I'm ready for the competition. Mississippi student Whitney is the youngest semifinalist. I'm looking to win. While some of her savory dishes have been inconsistent, this could be the first time you're showing your age. Her brilliant desserts have earned her the nickname the Pastry Princess. Your souffle was perfect. Absolutely perfect. And the winning dish, Whitney, well done. And made this young cooking prodigy a serious candidate for the title of America's first master chef. I mean, it's cooked by an angel. Uh, well, I it's fine. Bartender Lee Ooh, it's just a lot of crying, dude. Been seriously for a year. The first American master chef. That's what I like drama. I think the crying is flavor so combinations, useless. elegant technique, and sophisticated plating style. That's gorgeous. You've set the pace in master chef. Have wowed the judges enough to win him several challenges. Lee, back to back. It's never happened before. But could his overambition? It's not popping for me, and I just expect that you can come up with something exciting cost him the master chef crown second place is not an option at all okay base added. joe yeah what are you going to challenge them to make you today you're going to make a chicken parmesan oh damn oh that's a unique dish and don't underestimate the simplicity of a great chicken parmesan uh graham what would you put the dish that i want you to cook for me is a perfect eggs benedict it's a very difficult dish to do. The techniques of an That's egg boring. Benedict is very, very sophisticated. I'm looking for something you guys like that? with a wow factor. I challenge both of you to make me the most delicious cheesecake. <laughs> That's right. I'm terrified of the cheesecake right now. Ready? Whitney, is it something you could do I with your eyes closed, cheesecake. or is it um, something? Barely, rarely make cheesecake. Thanks. Wow. Are you ready? Yes. Two hours to cook three stunning dishes, and your time starts from now. Off you go. In the second semifinal, the rules remain the same. Three dishes, two hours, one winner. This is probably the highest wow. level of pressure I've been through since this competition started. I won't lie, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Whitney is... Years. She's come a long way. Now she's the head of the competition, and I need to watch my back at all times. Lee has great creativity, and that's what something I think that the judges are really going to look at is his creativity versus my creativity. Yeah. I just jumped on that cheesecake right away. Whitney's a strong dessert person. I am very weak at dessert, but I'll just do my best. Right, Lee. Now, what's the flavor of the cheesecake? Cheesecake has vanilla in it. Uh -huh. I'm also going to caramelize some rhubarb with some butter, some sugar, and some ginger to mm -hmm. make like a rhubarb compote. Rhubarb puree on top of the cheesecake sounds delicious. Right, Whitney. Yes. Talk to me about the cheesecake. I'm doing a no-bake cheesecake. So, I know bake cheesecake. Well, honestly, yeah. I was thinking it's about something in my head. It's a nightmare in order for it to set. You're not baking it, so therefore it's got to set in the fridge. Whitney, as ever, adventurous, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Thank yeah. you. Whitney and Lee, one hour gone, one hour to go. One of you will be going through to the final to face David what Miller. Is doing? One of you will be leaving Master Chef. Here we go, guys. It smells amazing. Let's do it, guys. Come on. Pop it up. I knew that the two savory dishes that we're gonna have to make, I have to nail absolutely Dang. perfectly. What's the bacon for? The bacon's gonna go into the, the chicken roulade. Aren't we making chicken parm? We're making chicken parm. There's gonna be plenty of cheese in there. Sounds confusing. Taking a simple dish and you're mucking it up. Why don't you make what I asked for? You know, I'm just trying to infuse some more flavor in there. I think you're trying to win is what you're trying to do. You're trying to make something better that's been around since the beginning of time. So that's a that's a tall order. What is that? Tell me about the chicken. I'm putting a little twist on it. I thought you'd put a twist on it, yeah? <laughs> surprise, surprise. I'm filling it with a mixture of mozzarella cheese filling. and... Normally, a chicken parmesan is flat. When you say filling, you're rolling it? I'm not rolling it. I'm just going to make a little pocket and fill it. I'm gonna keep some of the tradition, but add my own skin. Yep. What? They're definitely out there taking Wait, risks they're both with trolling. interpreting the recipe. 
And I would understand if one went rogue and one was consistent, but yeah. they're both off the path. Right. That's the reason why they're called classics. Right. Isn't it? Lee and Whitney, 20 minutes to go. Start to visualize those dishes on the plate. With two of the dishes well underway, both contestants have to tackle a perfectly timed Eggs Benedict. How are we doing on my Benedict? The Benedict is going to go over, instead of an English muffin, which I find boring, it's going to go over a, like a latke, a potato pancake. OK. And then the egg and the hollandaise. Could be good. I think it's going to go well. Could, could Eggs Benedict, good. what's the twist on that? Because it's bound to be one now. Yes, I'm going to do a well, great Well, as long as it's not too cake. overwhelming. As opposed to the? As opposed to the muffin. I took a southern twist to it, and I made a grit cake. And I did an andouille sausage, which pulls to my, like, Cajun um, background. Holiday sauce. When was the last time you made a holiday sauce? Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never, ever, But, ever. I mean, that's kind of the spin on everything, because I haven't made a lot of things since I've been here. And it's all usually came out pretty well, so I'm not so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your first egg going in? Yes. Whoa, look at that technique. Nice. She uses the swirl, the convection. That is impressive. I'm going to do more than one just so I have a backup. One hour, 50 minutes gone. Last 10 minutes. The most important 10 minutes since you've been here in MasterChef. Swirling. Make it count, Whitney. Lee. My mom, the fact that she's present Honestly, to me, it means more than anything. And I'm, I'm ready to bring it. I am not giving up till I get this title under my belt. Three minutes left. Come on. For Whitney, Wait. it's time to find out if her cheesecake had enough time to set in the fridge. I forgot the cheesecake. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That is a very modern cheesecake. Good job, good job. Smart and is that what it, is that what it looks like? No baked cheesecake setting within that time in the fridge. Very courageous. Good. Lee, starting to put things on a place. Ooh, what Dodge for that. Pretty good. No, oh, did, no, did you? Whitney, your egg. Oh. With only seconds to go, Whitney must cook and replate her final dish. 15 seconds to go, Whitney, you've got to get the egg on the plate. That's a major throw. Oh, boy. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Cross it. 2, Cross it. 1. to go, Whitney, you've got to get the egg on the plate. Oh, boy. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, oh, that, that five, looks, that, that looks awesome. four, three, Sausage. two, Sausage. one, and go. Stop. <laughs> one of you will be joining David Miller in the final of MasterChef. Oh, the first ever timer. final of MasterChef. Good luck to you both. All right, let's do it. Whitney, why don't you describe your dish to me real quick? It's a southern take on an Eggs Benedict. I made a grit cake, pan fried it. Then I added a little bit of Cajun nice and Dooley sausage. A lady after my heart with the whole southern flair kind of thing. Lee, why don't you walk me through yours? So there's a latka on the bottom oh, as damn. the starch component, the prosciutto on top, and the beautifully poached egg with some uh, coriander seed and cayenne hollandaise. It's very unique. You went out on a limb. You decided to change the actual hey. vehicle for the Benedict, the English muffin. It's a dangerous move because it needs to be really thin to fry and get crispy all the way around, like a nice little hash brown. Let's see if we get some ooze action. That's a pretty sexy poached egg, I must say. Could be a little bit more runny, but it is what it is. The egg is cooked perfectly. 
all of it combines to make a really delicious dish that I'd be psyched to order in a restaurant. <laughs> Whitney, you ready? Pretty beautiful. Really nice cooked egg. I guess a little too many. I think. Grit cake. Hmm. Oh? All the elements are prepared correctly, but the grit cake is so big. It's like an 86 ounce truck stop grit cake. I think at the end of the day, I got to go with my heart. What looks best, lead, what lead. tastes best. Stop drawing. And what has Stop, shown the lead. most technique. And Lee, that yeah. is yours. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. That's one nothing to Lee. Whitney, if you lose this next plate, you're leaving MasterChef. OK, Whitney, Lee, serve me. Chicken Parmesan. I they, looked at Lee's and I looked at mine, them. and um, I knew that I had oh, to get what this is point that, dude? to make it. And I mean, Joe, he is a tough, tough judge. I wanted to have the gooeyness of the mozzarella on the inside instead of on the outside, and did a little bit of a different take on the marinara. And uh, Lee? I made a great uh, tomato sauce, and over that chicken that's actually rolled, stuffed with some mozzarella on the inside and the mushroom duck cell. All that was breaded, some Parmesan on top. Give them a try. Um, is, I think, impressing me. Um, at first, I was kind of jarred and quite surprised that you would take such a risk. But on further inspection and on eating it, it kind of works in a way on my palate that I like. Although, kind of a strange interpretation. <sighs> Whitney, your dish although in appearance seems to be kind of rogue getting the melted cheese, breaded fried chicken, and the fluffy tomato sauce. Spit it out, woman. Lee, I have to say that I gotta give this one to Whitney. Congratulations. Excellent. When Joe announced that my dish won, I was like, yes, you know, I still have a chance, and I know I'm going to rock with dessert. Lee and Whitney. scripted. Let's go. Come on, chop, one. fucking chop. Next, it's the battle of the cheesecakes. Lee, have you done enough to take down the pastry princess? I've done the most I've ever done with uh, pastry and baking, Direct. and it's right in front of you, and I think it's delicious. Let's go, Lee and Whitney, please. It was all down to what a- was my show, bitch? Cheesecake. What was my Did show? Ever... Ten. Previously. Thank you. No, no spoilies. One, one. Next, it's the battle of the cheesecake. That looks a classic baked cheesecake, New York style, topped with a rhubarb compote stroke puree. What else oh. is inside the rhubarb? There's um, butter and sugar, obviously, and in front of the this is the finale. Ginger. Whitney, explain I don't know about the that. blackberries around the outside. What have you done with them? The blackberries have been cooked in a little sugar and just let them stew on the stovetop. The toppings, I let sugar kind of almost come to a caramel, kind of like a brittle. 
why did you choose not to bake yeah. a cheesecake and go with something that was just set in a fridge? I like the fluffiness that it kind of adds to this take on it versus the baked. What are you Look, looking for inside says, that cheesecake? Me, it's a take. It's gonna be creamy. A take, a take. And then you have the texture. Just cook you the fucking the meal, yo. On top, and then you have the berries that will give us all just like a contrast of flavors, but they'll all work really well together. Jesus Christ, this channel. It's incredibly fragrant. There's a fresh vanilla bean in there. Right, Lee. Fresh vanilla. What are you hoping for inside that cheesecake? But it'll be lighter, definitely sweet, and some citrus hints from some lemon juice and a little bit of Grand Marnier. One bite of cheesecake is the difference separating you both right now. It looks a little all over the place. It looks chaotic a little bit. It's actually a lot lighter than it looks. The base is done perfectly. You pull that off, and it complements the tart sweetness of the cheesecake. Honestly, Lee and Whitney, this is the closest I've ever had to judge two dishes and to nominate one winning dish, because they both taste superb. The person joining David Miller in the final of the first ever MasterChef. Congratulations Lee, to... Lee, 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 Lee. Whitney. <laughs> that cheesecake is unique. Texture, flavor, and with that modern interpretation, you took a huge risk and it worked. I'm definitely feeling proud of myself. Here I am now, going into the finals of America's First Master Chef, and this means the world to me. This is Lee, kind of bullshit. You've gone through one hell of a journey. That this is just bullshit, dude. That that, that was just bullshit. It's an amazing cheesecake, and you know damn well you hold a future in this industry. That is a dish to be proud what of. The fuck. <laughs> Can I have my mom just come and try my food? Please. Having spent so long on an airplane, traveling <laughs> 7,000 miles, I'd love you to come down. <laughs> Lee is the best, though. He's more technical, knowledgeable, overall skilled, and has the finesse Anna, and think? the surgical skills Amazing. of a fucking brain I surgeon know, with you the knife. Like the judges, maybe? Um, yeah. Done. Vote. No problem, no problem. Mm. I came out a winner today because Whatever, I man. had the opportunity to cook for my mom. Oh, no, don't cry. <sighs> and all, you know, competition aside, that, that to me means more than anything. And it just tells me that I am doing the right thing with my life. Oh, I'm so proud of you, sweetheart. Lee, it's been an amazing journey. Yes, it has, Chef. I promise you, you hold oh, the no. most amazing future. Grab it with both hands. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so, the the message too. This whole True. experience just strengthened my belief that I did find my calling in life. What? I think, I, I, I think you purposely didn't cry before. You talk like a chef. You're very passionate. Congratulations. Wait, it wait. Showed me Chad, guys, was this ever aired? I don't, I don't think we've. I don't, I don't think we saw this part. Talk like a chef. You're very passionate. That was not even aired. It showed me that I the have first the first four episodes. He was not in the show. To really grab it and make the most of it, and that's exactly what I'm going to be working on. Hey, you have gone from down his here. His content was so dog shit. He didn't make the. He didn't make the cut. This is the best and the most unique dish in the history of Master Chef. <laughs> The education that I got from this whole experience is worth just as much as a quarter of a million dollars.
Coming up next, it's David versus Whitney in the grand finale. Stop spoiling. I don't, I don't care.